I'm Rich London. Welcome to another episode of Indie Labs where we put the science in your hands. Are you easily swayed by people's opinions? Some people are very easy to convince, and that can sometimes be a problem because the next person comes along and can convince them just the other way. Then there's some other people out there that no matter what you say, no matter what evidence you give them, they are locked into their opinion. They cannot be convinced. There are people who believe the earth is flat. Seriously, it doesn't matter what you show them. They believe it, 100%. So why am I bringing this up and what does it have to do with today's experiment? Well, there's some materials out there that work the exact same way when it comes to magnetism. Some materials can be easily magnetized. If you get them near or in contact with another permanent magnet, they too will start to behave magnetically. They are easily convinced to be magnetic. Remove the magnet, and while these materials may hold on to their magnetic opinion for a while, they'll easily lose it. These materials, we say, are magnetically soft. Now other materials, no matter how strong of a magnetic field you put them in contact with, they will not be convinced. They will not start acting like magnets. We call these materials magnetically hard. And actually, the materials that we think of as permanent magnets, these too are magnetically hard. They can't easily be convinced to stop acting like a magnet. Well, let's look into this a little bit further by doing a classic experiment. We're going to make a do-it-yourself DIY compass. But we're not just going to show you how to make one. Let's learn some of the science behind why it works. When it comes to magnetism, it's all about what the electron is doing. Electrons have a property called spin. And depending upon which way they're spinning, we'll call it either spin up or if it's spinning the opposite way, we'll call it spin down. And we'll use these arrows to represent which way it's spinning. Now consider this material. Inside these boxes are what we call domains. And the direction of the arrow is letting you know where the overall spin direction is of the electrons involved. When the electrons are spinning in different ways, the arrows are all random like this, and that material is not magnetized. Now let's say that this material is magnetically hard. Well, that means if we apply an external magnetic field to it, nothing really that interesting happens. All the arrows stay in their random positions. But now let's say that we have something that's magnetically soft. If we do the same thing when we apply a magnetic field, well, all those electron spins are going to line up with that magnetic field. When these spins are all aligned, you now have a material that is magnetized. And it has its own magnetic field now, too. When we have materials like this, well, we call them magnets, and they have a north and a south pole. And it's because of these domains and the electron spins, that's why when you break a magnet in half, you wind up with two magnets that also have a north and south pole. Now, our Earth has its own magnetic field. It's pretty weak and not that noticeable, but if you have a material that is magnetized, and it's also lightweight and free to move, it will align with these magnetic field lines. That's what a compass is. For materials today, you're going to first need a permanent magnet. Now, in all honesty, the stronger the magnet, the better, but a fridge magnet can work just fine for this too. You're going to need a bowl or a container, preferably something that you can see through as well, so glass or some type of see-through plastic. Now, water's going to go into that container, and we're going to need to float something on top of it, and this is a place where I've seen so many different things used. You've got a lot of options, but I think the best, cheapest, easiest thing to get a hold of is the top of a soda bottle. To serve as our compass needle, you're going to need something that is magnetically soft. A lot of people will use sewing needles for this, but just because I enjoy the more do-it-yourself idea, I'm going to use a paper clip. Now you can stop there if you want to, but if you want to get into some of the mathematics, the ultra cool part, you're going to also want a piece of paper that has a nice straight line drawn on it. You want a protractor to measure angles. You're also going to need an actual compass that we can use to measure how far off from the real value we are. And you're going to want a calculator. Okay, so for today's hypothesis, I'm going to make the claim that I will be able to use this technique to make a do-it-yourself compass that will be 90% accurate or better. Let's get into it. Using an actual physical compass or a GPS compass on your phone, locate which way is magnetic north. Then carefully also set this on that piece of paper that has the line on it and get that line to line up with magnetic north. Might need to adjust it a little bit, but once you do, Take the compass off of there and maybe label which way is north on your paper. Place that glass bowl on your paper and fill that up with a good amount of water. Now again, you can use just a sewing needle, but I'm going to use a paper clip for this. And I'm going to bend out my paper clip to the straightest part. Might need some wire cutters for it. 
and now you've got your needle. Okay, now here's the important part. Taking your magnet with the same side, you're going to glide it across your magnetically soft needle. And you're always going to go the same direction each time. Not back and forth. You can get some results doing it back and forth, but you get much better results if you're always gliding in the same direction. Take it away and glide. Take it away and glide. Make sure that you're not going back and forth. You want to do this? I've found about 50 times. So count as you go. Give it 50 glides. Now set your cap very gently down on the water and also very gently set your needle on top of it. And then just let it do its thing. Your needle should align with magnetic north and south. It's lining up with those field lines. Now once it's done its thing, take a photo from directly above and it doesn't have to be right over the line that's on your paper. We're going to be able to analyze it even if it doesn't line right up. Once you're done also, you can kind of play around with that magnet and see how the compass behaves. All right, let's see how we did. All right, so you snapped a photo of yours, right? Well, if you're doing yours at home, one thing you can do that's a little bit easier is print it out onto paper and then just use an actual protractor to measure the angles. I'm going to do it though digitally here so that way I can show it to you guys on video a little bit easier. But either way, when you print out your picture, you're going to want some extra white space on the outside of your photo. That way you can do what's called extrapolating the lines. That's where you take the straight line and you just extend it even further. I'm going to do that here with both lines, the line that was on my paper, and then I'm going to do it with the straightest part of my paper clip. When I extend those lines, I get way down here, and then I'm going to put a little yellow dot there to show that this is where those two lines met up. And from there, I'm going to use that with my protractor. Now I'm going to use a protractor here on the screen. I'm going to cut and paste one in from the internet. It works the same way. And now if we zoom in to see what angle we had, now that looks like one, two, three, four, about four and a half degrees. We have some error in here, so let's calculate that. Well, for our experiment, the most that we could be off is 90 degrees. Since 90 degrees is the most we could be off, then all you need to do for this calculation is take the angle of your measurement and divide that by 90. Then multiply that by 100, and that is calculating your percent error. My experiment was 5% off. I had 5% error. Hypothesis supported. But hey, here's the challenge. I want you to try this, and I want you to report your results to me. Let me know how you did in the comments below. Hey, I really hope that you had fun with this, and I hope that you learned a lot more about how magnetism works. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more Indie Labs in the future. And as always, if you have a science topic you'd like to see us explore, let us know about it in the comments. Our research and development team will be hard at work to try to satisfy your request. I'm Rich Lund, and I hope that you've been easily convinced science is pretty darn awesome. See you next time. Seed the drops, I'm even harder to stop. Got natural competitors on my hit list, and showing no mercy. Cause I got